Hello there, everybody, and welcome to episode 148 of the Master the Mind and Master Anything podcast with me, Dave Cottrell. If you caught 147, the episode would shout, and you uh, heard me talking about being a little bit run down, a little bit under the weather mentally on Tuesday when I actually recorded that intro. Fear not, do not worry about me, because it is currently Friday. It is less than three days later than that, because it's Friday afternoon. I'm recording the podcast back live on Twitch. I took Wednesday off in a much needed way and I worked through on Thursday. Was able to bring a whole lot more to my game on Thursday as a result of taking that day off. And this is like me making a proactive promise to this podcast is that one day I will get it right with being proactive with my own mental health. We've talked about this on the podcast before about being proactive and actually teach it, treating your mental health and your mental health care like like multivitamins, not like painkillers. Like with a multivitamin, you take it before there's a problem. With a with a painkiller, you take it only once there is a problem. So let's roll the jingle and let's get into this episode, which is all about tribalism, individualism, and globalism. So for everyone on Twitch, you're not getting a jingle rolled, sorry. <laughs> I haven't, actually, I'll tell you what, for the sake of Twitch, if I, if I hit my follower jingle, this is the jingle from the podcast. No, they're back on again. Ah, uh, You know what? I need to delete them because I don't like them. Don't like them. In fact, you know what? I'm going to change them now just in case anyone follows during this podcast or subscribes or anything like that. I don't want them. They don't, I don't like them. This will be a lot of editing later on. Alert box. Manage themes. Just need to delete the theme. Need to delete that theme. Use this one. Delete the, sc the scrapbook one. If I ever want it ever again, I'll reinstall it, but I don't want it. Right, so, my wonderful Twitch audience, um, if you were listening to the podcast right now, after that intro, you would get that. So there we go. Hello. <laughs> So welcome to another episode of Master the Man, Master Anything with me, Dave Cottrell. As I said in the intro, we're going to be talking about tribalism, globalism, and individualism. This is sort of three different levels of the same thing, and ultimately it's about how many people you care about, how many things you care about at one time. Individualism is kind of this, the principle of looking out for yourself, or maybe at best you're like absolute close circle your family or your um or your you know your really really close friends that's individualism and um, tribalism is looking out for your tribe and finding a tribe where you fit in slash belong and globalism is caring about everything in the world ever as soon as something is brought to your attention it gets added to the list of things you care about and i kind of want to talk about how in a mental health state or even just a mindset state any each and every one of these things plays into how we think how we feel um what the expectations are on us what the pros are for these things what the cons are for these things and this all comes off the back of for years um for years within i suppose even the positive mindset space the whole your vibe attracts your tribe um, phrase kind of got banded about and finding your tribe was saw as a very very positive thing and I still personally think it is whereas at this particular moment in time there seems to be an awful lot of push in this world to to refer to someone as selfish if they're not looking up to absolutely everything in the world and if you remember the burnout and empathy episode we talked about this briefly then in the fact that if you are a person who is fighting your own battles can you really afford to take on somebody else's and sometimes we do because the cause that we're taking on the other person's battle for is just so immense that it needs to be done and other times we don't 
And that's not necessarily because the cause isn't so immense. That can be because we're exhausted from everything that we do take on. And so it can be, um, you know, it can just be down to the fact that we've got so much going on at that particular time in our lives that we don't have the energy to actually move forward. Now, where this is sort of coming to a head at the moment is that anyone that doesn't automatically care about everything seems to be very quickly labeled as being selfish, as being uncaring. And then when that happens, the them and us between people who care, who are the ones that saying, okay, when not everyone cares, there's no one that cares about absolutely everything. There just isn't, okay? So the people that care, that criticize you for not caring, they're criticizing you for not caring about the thing that they care about. But it's very quick for that to turn into a belief about a person rather than a belief about a person's actions, i.e. this person is uncaring, not this person doesn't have the capacity right now to care about this. And the more I actually look into this, I've strived. What's the word? If you str what is your, what's the word for strived? Strived for something? I've been sort of striving, shall we say for to be more of a globally minded person for years like i've i've wanted to take an interest in things that are going on in other countries and things that are affecting other populations than the ones that i'm part of and there genuinely does come a point in all of it where you can't take on anymore and globalism true globalism i think it's Personally, I think it's a bit of a pipe dream. I don't think we're capable of it. The thing is, we're, I don't think we're capable of it, but I do think that we're expected to do it, we're expected to at least try for it. And one of the reasons I don't think we're capable of it is something called Dunbar's number. Um, Dunbar's number is a theory that we can only each hold about 150 meaningful connections with other people. After that, it becomes very, very hard to remember enough details about a person or enough of a person's specific story so that when you do relate to them you are on the same page as them and you remember all of those things and that you feel that you can have a close relationship with that person and 150 may seem like a lot of people it really might if you were to put 150 people physically in front of me right now i'd like you know probably look at it and think it was quite a lot of people Whenever I get 150 downloads on a podcast, I think that's quite a lot of people that have listened. Um, at the same time, if 150 people came into my Twitch stream, I'd probably lose my mind. Because, you know, because in, in Twitch status, we're used to kind of like 10. So it's, you know, it is a lot of people, but on a global scale, it's not a lot of people at all. You know, we're talking like 8 billion people on this planet. And when we come into globalism, it's like, okay, there's another thing to care about. There's another thing to to be aware of. And if we're not aware of this, then we're not good people. And I don't think that's I don't think that's fair or right at all. Um, and I posted about this on Instagram a couple of days ago, and it uh, it got an okay response. I think people were quite tentative as to how to post or how to react to it because ultimately, no one wants to come across as not caring. No one wants to come across as being a selfish person. So when the rules of what makes a selfish person are constantly being changed, constantly being dictated, um, and when you know 7 billion people, 8 billion people might all have a slightly different interpretation on what makes a selfish person, then it can all be, uh, you know, it can all be a great big struggle, really. Because... <sighs> I mean, I talk about beliefs with my clients all the time and our beliefs often or hardly ever, sorry, our beliefs hardly ever come from us being told we're not good enough or what it takes to be good enough. They come from what our interpretation of what we think it means to be good enough in other people's eyes. And as a result of that, if we're trying to be something for one other person, that's hard enough. If we're trying to be something for 10 other people who all have a different idea on what we should be, it becomes difficult, if not impossible, to manage. So if the definition of the word selfish, if there are 
a thousand different definitions of this that you're exposed to, if there's even 150, to go back to Dunbar's number, if there's even 150 people you're exposed to that all have different opinions on what is constituted as selfish, how we should live our lives, you're really going to struggle with that. Especially if you're like me, you know, an empath slash people pleaser slash um, obliger, because you're going to want, there's going to be, not necessarily want to, but there's going to be part of your unconscious mind that is drawn towards trying to essentially meet the recommendations and expectations of every single person in that group. Cancel culture is a massive kind of, um, is a massive example of this right now is the fact that there is you know i don't even know how many million people there are on twitter but they all have their own idea on what is acceptable behavior and ultimately the principle behind cancel culture is you act and say and do the way things the way that we say you should act and say and do things or you don't have a career anymore which is pretty messed up when you think about it now I understand that it's come from a good place. It's come from a place where we're trying to stamp out racism, we're trying to stamp out homophobia, we're trying to stamp out bigotry. These are all great things. But when we start there with, when we start stamping out those things, there are certain people who get the idea of, now we need to stamp out this, now we need to stamp out that, and now we need to stamp out this as well. We need to stamp out anyone that doesn't agree with our group. And this, to me, is the biggest drawback of tribalism. So tribalism, kind of circling around here, but I think it's all going to make sense in line eventually. Tribalism ultimately is finding your tribe, and that means finding a, tr a group of people that you belong with. That is true tribalism, finding a group of people that you belong with. Now, belonging doesn't mean... Belonging doesn't mean that you 100% agree with these people on everything. It doesn't mean that you 100% are the same as the people in this group. And true belonging means that there is space for individualism within a tribe. Unfortunately, that isn't the way that most tribes are managed. Most tribes now are managed with fitting in. And fitting in means that someone in the tribe somewhere, you know, someone with a, with a particular level of importance within that tribe, has got some spoken or unspoken rules on how we must adhere in order to belong, which really means to fit in. Because if you don't believe in those rules and you still have to act like them, then that is fitting in. And it goes back to peer pressure in high school. You know, like we we want to hang out with the cool kids and all the cool kids smoke, so you go and smoke. You want to hang out with the cool kids later on, they all do drugs or they all do alcohol, and therefore you do those things in order to, to fit in. You know, even as adults, we go, let's say you're on a diet and the people in the office bring in donuts and everyone eats a donut but you don't want to feel like the odd one out so you go and eat the donut even though it's against what you actually want for yourself in that moment this level of fitting in what happens over time is when a person fits in with something they chip away at themselves the, they lose part of themselves to the process and they begin to actually resent the group that they are a part of and they've spent so much time investing and being a part of this group that they don't really know where they belong outside of there. But this is the downside to tribalism when the tribe doesn't allow for individualism within the tribe. Is the fact that we get very specialized with our tribes right now. So it's like, you know, you could have a tribe of people who enjoy exercise, but we don't have that. We have a tribe of people who enjoy CrossFit or we have a tribe of people who enjoy running or a tribe of people who enjoy rock climbing. Now, one of the other dangers of this tribalism is the idea that when you then start to meet with people who understand you where you're coming from, it's a double-edged sword. And this is something that I think of in the mental health tribe, okay? Within the mental health tribe, there are people that I find it extremely easy to talk to. And there's a lot of people who find it extremely easy to talk to me. And this is, to me, I love and hate this compliment at the same time. And I'll, the compliment is, oh, you're just so easy to talk to. I wish everyone else was as easy to talk to as you are. Now, you're probably thinking, what, 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 a, what could I possibly hate about that? I don't hate the compliment itself. I hate what's behind the compliment because when you find people that you really click with, now suddenly we have a comparison 
to the people that we don't click with as well. Whereas before we weren't really comparing them to anyone else, we were just saying, well, that's such and such and I get on with them this level. Then if you open up to someone like me or a really good counselor or just a really nice empathetic person, suddenly now your expectation shifts and you want everyone else to be the same. And it can cause friction. Becoming a part of a tribe can cause friction with the people that are outside of your tribe that you didn't necessarily have before you joined the tribe because you know you'll be like beforehand it'd be like like, let's say let's say you go and find you'd go and join a tribe of you know fitness enthusiasts and i'm not talking about like you know a bunch of people in a minibus that are all there in everlast vests um, and tour the country looking for one stops at gyms you know i'm not talking about that i'm talking about let's say you make a bunch of friends down at the gym or you join an online tribe which online tribes are extremely prevalent and popular these days let's say you do that and then each one of these people understands your need to train or understands your need to diet or understands the level in which you want to control things within your life and um, your family don't now by finding that tribe you will feel supported but as a byproduct of that you may also feel more excluded from anything that's not your tribe than you ever did before and this is worth bearing in mind because this doesn't have to be a foregone conclusion i opened up a few weeks about back on the get by with a little help with my friends episodes about the fact that i got so used to the mental health community allowing me to talk about my mental health um openly without pre-qualifying everything without having to describe anything any further they'd just be there they'd be open and they'd talk about my mental health and i talked about the fact that by comparison now my friends don't it's more of a struggle to talk to my friends now the issue there is not the fact that there's anything wrong with my friends they just belong to a different tribe that actually Account, accounts for a huge chunk of my personality whereas the mental health community is another tribe that accounts for another chunk of my personality and it's about utilizing and moving between the tribes and actually ultimately getting what you need from each one without becoming so far indoctrinated in each one that ultimately you feel like you have to do everything that that tribe says this is and this is the big downside to me there's two big downsides to the tribe one is um is the idea i apologize for the siren um it's absolutely boiling in my room so I'm, i can't close the window otherwise <laughs> this podcast would never be recorded um number one in terms of the two big downsides is this high idea of what we talked about earlier which is fitting in so you you don't just abide by some of the rules of the tribe you have to abide by all of the rules of the tribe that's number one. Number two is the concept of the echo chamber. And the concept of the echo chamber is that within the tribe, you will only ever find people that reinforce what you already believe. You, so what that can lead to is it can lead to you having a very one dimensional view of the world because you think things in a certain way, you never challenge your own thoughts. And then when you kind of like post or open up about your own thoughts, you get a bunch of people that are automatically on board with that. You're bouncing your ideas off people that you may as well just bounce them off a reflection of yourself. You're going to get the exact same response. And um, you you know, you know can lose a big chunk of objectivity within a tribe because, yeah, it can become... Like I believe, you know, I allowed myself to believe. And actually, I'm not going to lie, it was a very convenient belief for a little while. I allowed myself to believe because I spent so much time talking to the mental health community. I allowed myself to believe that that the stigma on mental health had massively reduced. I allowed myself to believe that, though, to the, almost to the point that there wasn't a stigma on mental health anymore. In that, you know, that was a really nice belief. <laughs> it was very pleasant because I was just like, "Yes, we're doing it. We're like, we're winning. We're actually getting somewhere with this um, destigmatization of mental health," and we are just probably not to the level at which I thought we were because the only people I was checking with in this was my echo chamber. Um, they were people within my tribe, people that were autom automatically basically more willing to open up to each other about mental health. So as a result, as that tribe grew, we had more and more interactions with people to, um, to basically almost feel the exact same thing. 
And um, going back to Dunbar's number for a second, because there was something I was meant to say on that earlier. Um, this was something that I really saw through a life a day or have been seeing through a life a day for the first three years that's been going so far. And I hate to even admit this because people would be, I think people would be a little bit upset. Um, and it's the fact that with a life a day, I speak to 365 people each year during a life a day, plus whatever else I do in one-to-ones and seminars and group classes and all of that stuff. But 365 individuals at least each year tell me their story. And there's a small handful of them each year that if I bumped into them, I'd remember what we talked about. And it's nothing to do with the fact that I'm a bad person. It's nothing to do with the fact that I don't have a good memory. It's to do with the fact that there's a, you know, there's 365 of them each year. And you know, thanks to Dunbar's number, we can only really maintain this 150 connections. In my 150 connections, I have my mum, my brother, my kids, my wife, my close friends. You know, I've already at like 2025 20, before I even get out of a sort of my immediate circle. And then you kind of, and then you, you know, you're left with 125, and it's like, okay, work colleagues, people that I actually co-host shows with, and things like that. By the time we get to that, there's like there's not there's not much room left. So unless a person has um, a even actually if a person has a particularly memorable story, I don't always remember it. I don't always remember which story is attached to which person. So I hated this in the first year, if I'm perfectly honest, because in the second year. What I did was I said, okay, you can, anyone who's had one last year can have one this year as well. You can have one a year. It's not just like, I wasn't trying to get a 365 unique people each year. Um, and that, what that led to was a lot of people coming back that had done things the year before. And so I would have to just, I, I kind of like wrestled with this for most of December 2018, I think, was it? Um, and I'm like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And I decided that honesty was the best policy. And I just said to everyone, look, I'm sorry. Like, can you just recap me on what we talked about last year? Like, just so I know, because I spoke to 365 people last year and I don't want to accidentally attach to you something that I spoke about to somebody else. And the vast majority of people were actually really nice about that. Um, Because the thing is, I have spoken to 365 people that year. Chances are they've only spoken to, you know, myself or a small handful of people about their mental health that year. And so they're more likely to remember what that interaction was than me. And again, that's not because their memory is better than mine. That's because they're handling fewer connections in that memory than I am. And that's that's the whole thing is like, you know, Dunbar's number has been put into play in companies when companies go belong beyond a certain size. Um, they become much more difficult to manage when governments go beyond a certain size they go much more difficult to manage um, and that and so when we are expected to care about all you know 7.999999 billion people left other than us on this planet I don't think it's a reasonable request and I don't think you're a bad person if you can't it's not that you don't want to either and even if you did not want to I don't think that's an unreasonable thing. I think tribalism has its problems when it comes to kind of excluding other people. It has its problems when it comes to the echo chamber. It has its problems when it comes to kind of forcing people to fit in and adhere to all of the rules. But I think globalism has the opposite side of that. I think has even more problems. And though it, it comes under the guise of being a good Samaritan, being a person of the world, being kind, you know, it comes under the guise of that, but it, you know, completely and utterly can burn you out at the same time. And um, I saw this, I saw it like, we've talked about burnout and stuff so many times on the show, but I saw a really great version of it yesterday um, on Instagram. And um, I'll actually, I'll, you know what, I'll take a few seconds to just try and find it. Um, I'm doing this live on Twitch as well, so if anyone in Twitch wants has got anything to say about globalism, tribalism, or individualism, please do pop it in the chat, and we'll include that in the show. Um, but it was only yesterday, so I should be able to find it quite easily. Where is it? It's a cute little raccoon eating pizza. Uh, it's gone. 
12th of August. Was that yesterday, the 12th of August? No, 13th. There he is. Okay, so the post, it's by Iwan Halianto, which is I W A N H A L I A N T O on Instagram. Iwan Halianto. Um, and basically, it's um, it's got it says, "Have you ever felt so tired trying to please everyone, but ending up trying to please no one? Imagine if you have a pan of pizza and you want to share it with your friends. If you try to share it with a thousand people, then each person would only get a really tiny piece of it, and that wouldn't mean anything for them. If you try to share it with a hundred people, then each person would get a bigger share of the pizza, but still not big enough to make them care. But if you only try and share it with ten people," then everyone would be able to get a big enough slice to make them understand how tasty and precious your pizza is. The pizza stands for your time, attention and love. You only have a limited amount of them in life, so there is no way it would be enough for everyone. Don't just invest in everyone, invest in the right ones. Find a smaller number of people who could appreciate your pizza and only allocate a small portion of it to be divided amongst people outside of your circle. Then what about the last slice? That last slice is yours, because no matter how hard you're trying to care for others, you should never forget to take care of yourself. Now, I've told people that a kabillion times, and I have to remind myself of it a million times, but it took a really cute cartoon raccoon eating a pizza for me to um, for me to um, to really understand that. And, uh, well, not understand it, it just put it in a different perspective. And this is something that you'll have heard me talk about Mounty a million times on this podcast now. He does keep on popping up. This is one thing that he and I spoke about yesterday was the idea that we were talking about imposter syndrome and the idea of the whole who am I to tell people things. And you know what? As a little side note to all this, you if you can put something in a way, it can be the same thing that someone's heard like a million times. But if you can put something in a way that gets past the way that they normally think or gets to their kind of core or finds their, um, you know, finds a way through to their inner personality, then you've done a bit of, you've done a great service to that person. It doesn't matter if you're sitting there listening to this podcast and you've ever thought I could never get out there and do a podcast or I could never talk about mindset or talk about my mental health journey. What could I possibly give to anybody else? Just know that like even myself, when I am talking about this same concept, that someone can say it in a different way that means the absolute earth to me and you can be that person for somebody else as well because the way you relay your message will be will be different will be unique will be you know will use the words that are different from other people will use emotion that other people share as well so you know your story is valuable you are valuable and what you've got to say is valuable as well so um, Stiggy Man, I'll come to that comment in a little bit because I'm doing the podcast at the minute. We're talking about globalism and stuff, but and we'll get to the um, the question of the day. By the way, if anyone ever wants to stop along to my Twitch, um, we do a question of the day on stream, and we've got a nice light-hearted one today, which is what is your guilty pleasure in terms of music? So, okay, right, back into globalism. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm almost finished on it, to be perfectly honest. The idea of the tribe is, um, is ultimately understanding why you want to be part of a tribe and you do you want to belong you want to build a group of people around you that get it but at the same time you don't want to get into a situation where you exclude all of the people that just don't get it maybe you can spend less time with those people and yes there's 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 a spectrum to all this right so it's not just immediately spend time less time with someone who kind of sort of maybe gets it it's not like cut that person out completely but like think about it in terms of how close you are to that and how close that person is to kind of your values and if that person's miles and miles and miles away then yeah probably that's the person that you don't really necessarily want to spend too much time with but at the same time we don't want to get into this position where we only we only deal with people who vibe with a hundred percent of our values because first of all that's putting you into a position where you've got a really, really selective tribe. Um, that might be almost impossible to find. And when you do that and you specialize, sorry about the uh, motorbikes as well. There's a lot of noise on the podcast today. Um, when you specialize to that level, what happens when someone comes along and they're 99% there 
and then they disagree with one other thing. And I'm going to finish on this note because I think the one area we see this more than anything nowadays is with politics. Uh, I'm not going to get too political. I'm going to talk about politics as a concept. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the intricacies and the specificities specificity of politics. Um, and I'm also not going to take any one given side um, because I'm not really into arguing about politics, really. But the underpinning factor of politics is the either the all in or all out kind of rule. The second you don't agree with one thing that the party that you are, you know, supporting does, it can be um, it can be something like you know it can set you off completely. Thank you very much for the follow on Twitch, Dan Dan Cot. Um, I'll have to check in whether that Cot actually has anything to do with the surname Cottrell. If it's real, you know, if we actually maybe distant relatives or something um you've just set off the podcast jingle on the stream so that's perfect timing so yeah the idea of uh, with politics we get these hard left and hard right situations and what they do is they they push us into this divided situation and there's never been a time where I, it might not, not be true that we've never been more divided than we are right now but at least it appears to be um it just appears to be absolutely no problem with that by the way about the noise it's like if if I'd have, I could have turned them off at my end so it's um I didn't because I don't want to so it's absolutely um Cotter close enough close enough um my surname's Cottrell so with politics we um we we split it out and we it seems like we've never been more divided than we are right now okay especially here in the UK I mean America's probably even 10 times worse but here in the UK we had the whole Brexit thing to deal with then we had the whole um you know the re-election thing to deal with and now we've got a complete another tribe tribes divided about um about how much you know we should be doing or shouldn't be doing during the lovely global pandemic and We've never, like, because of these tribes, if one person disagrees with one tiny thing, um, then it becomes in this into this situation where we now label them as the enemy. We label that person. If that person disagrees with me on one thing, he's now no longer, um, he's now no longer one of my people. And this is, um, this is, this is messy, very messy to do this because ultimately, you know it comes down to the word should again what everyone thinks that things should be we all disagree on so many things right we all disagree on what the best music is in the world we all disagree on what the best pizza is in the world we disagree on whether pineapple should be on it we disagree um with on the temperature like for some people this weather we've got at the minute is too hot for other people they're probably loving it we you know we all disagree on football teams we disagree on absolutely everything and when we get into the state of mind that if someone disagrees on one thing therefore we disagree with them on everything this is the real big danger of tribalism i'm personally i'm personally quite pro tribes providing you do one major thing and that one major thing is that you go into them objectively now you go into them mindfully let's go with mindfully you get involved in the tribe that you're involved in mindfully and you do regularly check with people outside of your echo chamber and assess and check whether the things that you've led yourself to believe or that your tribe has led you to believe or the rules of the tribe that let's say you get in the tribe and you agree with everything they say and then soon one day along the way someone throws another rule in the book and you're like oh i don't really agree with that but i've been part of this tribe for like 10 years and question things again a tribe that doesn't allow you to question things if you're not allowed to question things whatsoever if you're considered an outcast and um, if you question things then that's that's no good either because once again we're back at that same thing where people are asking you to fit in rather than to belong belonging doesn't mean you obey 100 percent of the rules it means you're accepted for the person that you are and that's the whole thing that's what i like to that's what I want to create with my tribe, right? With my online tribe, whether that's on Instagram, whether that's on Twitch, whether that's through this podcast. I want you to know that if you disagree with some things that I say, that doesn't mean you're not part of my tribe. 
I'd like to think that if you've listened to this podcast for a long time and you get to one thing that you disagree with after you've listened to 140 odd episodes where you kind of agree most of the time, I'd like to think you'd just say, you know what, I don't agree with Dave on this one, but I like his vibe on other things. So, you know what, I think I'll keep listening for a little while. Now, if I say something completely and utterly terrible and abhorrent, please feel free to call me out on it. Um, because just like you, you know, I can only work off the feedback that I get. And the feedback that I get could be my echo chamber. It could be people that just will listen to me um, no matter what. And if there is something on this podcast that you don't agree with, let me know. I'd love to actually discuss these things further. So that's it for the podcast. Um, everyone who's on Twitch, I'm going to be sticking around for, well, I'm going to be sticking around for another two hours. Uh, we can chat. We can, there might be some games, there might be some chat. Basically, the plan is with Twitch. If anyone who's listening to the podcast still wants to come across to the Twitch community and you're still wondering what on earth is this Twitch business, he's been going on about it for six months now. The idea of Twitch for me is to create a drop in center where people can come in and talk about mindset, can talk about motivation, can talk about mental health. And if no one's talking, I sit here and play computer games. But rather than kind of like, you know, sitting around in an empty counseling room waiting for a group to turn up, I'm there. We have an open conversation. We can talk about whatever we want. And we can just basically, it's just a casual place. Also, you can do it completely and utterly anonymously. Um, so you can totally come over. Don't even need to tell you your real name. You can get a screen name that doesn't give any clues as to who you are whatsoever. You can open up about your mental health. I keep the community really respectful. So far, it's keeping itself really respectful without me needing to do anything, really. And that's about it, really. So podcast people, as always, if you master the mind, you can master anything. And sometimes mastering the mind might be finding out where you belong. And I will catch you all soon.